and it's going to be first. Kiora, um, great talk, thanks. Um, why are vegan diets more expensive? And is that something you would expect to change if more people move to veganism? Good question. Hello, here we go. Um, yeah, I unfortunately didn't quite have time to go through the food group breakdown. Um, but what we found um, as we kind of looked at the food groups going from um, current to vegan is that the, uh, the cost percentage for vegetables was a significant contribution. Um, also the dairy um, alternatives. So because what we also did is we had, and I didn't quite go into detail about them, but we also had um, similar to... Um, similar to other modeling studies, we had constraints around um, health constraints around the nutrition composition as well, so that we were meeting calcium requirements, things like that. Um, so it was predominantly vegetables and then the dairy alternatives, which was quite the big one. And also the protein as well, we saw because it included um, a wider variety of protein sources, so it included nuts and seeds as well. Um, we saw that that was a larger um, contribution to that increased cost. Thank you. Lovely. Now, um, a question for Renee. Recycling infrastructure in Australia is further developed than NZ. How do you recommend that we speed up introduction of new recycling streams in New Zealand? Yeah, it's hard because there's like an urgency, I think, within health to, to fix this now. And it's hard to build up that background um, recycling community. So what I've actually been doing is ringing around out of, you know, Googling and finding the innovation in my suburbs. So not dreaming big with big waste vendors because the waste vendors aren't there to support these small things. So ringing around, asking men's shed, do they take the hardware, looking for people who take bread tags, bottle tops, looking for innovation, um, even just in our plastics. So looking to actually, which we're about to launch, taking one, two and five plastics and remaking them back into health products. So that is just literally by Googling and finding the people innovation locally and just trying to support them and then celebrate them as much as possible. Um, and then I have been trying to advocate quite um, across Queensland Health, obviously, to build that infrastructure because it has started with nothing and, and we are we are almost there. We're still a fair way behind. But I think for NZ, looking at somebody who's locally using glass, because I know you have a lot of glass recycling in New Zealand, um, trying to find what's existing and work with them, I guess, is the best advice. Very good. Thank you so much. OK, I've got a question here for Christina. Why does the optimised diet include so much dairy when the dairy industry is a major emitter of greenhouse gases in New Zealand? That's a great question. And actually, the dairy um, category includes dairy alternatives and um, about 60% of that dairy alternative and dairy category was from soy yogurt. So I probably should have mentioned that earlier, sorry. Thank you very much. Um, I think we've got a question. We'll go to Sean. India spoke this morning about the negative impact of forestry. What are your thoughts on this and pine versus natives? Um, firstly, the reason why I got involved in this was to cause as much forest conservation as possible, because I'm a bit of a forest conservation junkie and I've got to find ways to finance my habit. And carbon trading is one way to do it without grants. And so like any industry, there's, there's a range in the sector. Like in coffee, there's fair trade coffee at one end and organic fair trade coffee at the other end. There's coffee that will cause a lot of suffering. Um, the same is true in the carbon market. So there's, there's not a monolith, it's not a monolithic sector. You do get damaging forms of forestry. Um, and in fact, the carbon price is stimulating a whole lot of forestry, which I'm not comfortable with. A lot of uh, plantations that are reducing the number of people in the rural landscape that are employed and turning small communities into smaller ones. Um, I don't see that as a, as a good thing. And also, when it comes to harvest time, if they're in erosion-prone country, you end up with those pictures of logs on beaches and stuff. So there's a range of negative impacts of forestry that need to be constrained that the emissions trading scheme doesn't 
have its own rules on how to fix. So that's up to regional councils and, and, and maybe central government to create guidelines on. What we do is we're a farmer's forester and we just work with landowners to see how they want to retire back paddocks and reforest their waterways and, and, and turn, instead of farming beef and lamb, they'll farm carbon credits and make the same or better living doing that. So it's really about who um, is doing the work and what kind of organisation is doing it. So you can avoid those negative impacts if you choose to, and that's the way we approach it. Thank you very much. I had a question for um, Stephanie here. Was supporting local suppliers of fresh food and the local economy a motivator for some of these organisations? Yes, yeah, it definitely was. They saw um, purchasing locally is also um, healthier for patients as well, especially if it was organic as well. And um, a few of the hospitals even listed on their menus um, what foods were locally and they were listing the farms that they were from to try and yeah educate patients about where the food was coming from um and they're also sending staff as well to the farms where their food was coming from to try and um yeah build that culture around it so yeah they did really value it thank you very much now we're 304 and i've got one question for sandy here can we um use ptl timber builds for our larger larger buildings too the curly one for you. <laughs> Sorry, um, I'm going to have to admit that I am really just starting my journey in this whole um, timber build, et cetera. My background is in the health planning of uh, hospitals, so the detailed internal layouts of complicated spaces such as theatre suites and uh, EDs and wards. Um, we do have uh, quite a few in-house experts, though, who I can point you in their direction. Um, some of our in-house team have recently spoken around Beatrice Tinsley on uh, the TV news and um, on Radio New Zealand. So come and have a chat to me and I've got a couple of colleagues with me and we'll be able to point you in the direction of some answers for that. Sorry. Great answer. Sorry to put you on the spot, but I didn't want to leave you out of the whole panel discussion. Look, I'd like to put, put everybody put their hands together for this amazing series of presentations.